Well, good evening. My name's uh, Craig Fitzgerald from Aspen Medical. This evening I'm going to tackle a bit of a sacred cow to try and convince you that a for-profit can actually have a social purpose. And I'm going to use the Aspen lens to talk you on our journey so far. By no means are we at the end of it, we're only at the beginning of it, but what we've done so far. So what's the purpose of a company? We've all read the management books. The purpose of a company is to maxim, maximise shareholder value. I don't know about most of you, but that's not why I work. That's not why I want to work, and I actually don't want to work for people who expect me to do that. I want to be motivated, I want to have purpose, and I want the organisation to give me purpose. And I, thought, I think most of us want that. I'll just read a quote here from the book uh, from Tom Peters and Robert Waterman who wrote in their book Search for Excellence, Companies that develop a philosophy and live the philosophy that invites everyone in the organisation with overall success of the company will benefit. Ironically, if you have a motivated team, then in turn, you stand a good chance of increasing shareholder value. It makes sense. It's not rocket science. If you've got motivated team members, and I use the, I use the term team members, not employees, motivated team members, then the company has got a good chance of success. You see these titles here, most of you who've been looking at business over the last seven or eight years notice there's a change. All these titles here, add social enterprise, add gates, cap uh, social capitalism, add all that in there. What all these have in common is a belief that business can make a profit and also serve a social purpose. Difficult, and we'll have many naysayers and there's many businesses that don't do it, but also there's a lot that do. So how do you get to this point? How do you try? So this is what this is about our journey. First of all, to bedrock. It's a bedrock in CSR and philanthropy. So we have a whole different lot of programs within our organisation, but these are not sustainable programs. These are programs that yes, give our employees or our team members, you know, engagement in the organisation through donation. We donate up to a thousand dollars per employee per charity. They donate every year in Australia. We've got 1,400 employees in Australia. Quite a considerable amount of money that goes out the door, which the employee, which the team members choose. But this, this is only the start. This is not sustainable because when a business downturns, the first thing that happens is CSR philanthropy gets cut off the list. So you've got to make your business case, and it's got to be a sustainable business case. Obviously, internally, we have a lot of internal champions and they need to be mentored and guided. They need to be at all levels of the business. Those internal champions will engage more team members. And then the challenge is, how do you develop that sustainable business case? How do you put that case to your board, to your CFO, and then how do you measure it and prove that you're making a difference? So what we've done in the next level a give me, an easy one, is social procurement. There in, in, even in Canberra here, you can procure off social enterprises, indigenous owned business, women owned businesses, businesses run by people with disabilities. There's a plethora, you just gotta look for it. Across Australia, there's numerous opportunities. However, the big fish is that if you can procure a large social contract, which is tough. So we're in medical, ideally we would love like to procure all our medical consumables, equipment, all that sort of stuff from a social enterprise. There isn't one, so we're incubating one in Sydney. We're building one in Sydney, not owned by us, but we're incubating it, but that, that will hopefully take our work. And it's not charity, this is your trading. You're trading with these businesses. So this is sustainability. I'll come back to it here first. I'll put B Corp above so social uh, shared value. We are a B Corp, we're Australia's largest B Corp. Read what B Corps are about. We're the only medical B Corp and the only B Corp in Canberra and the movement will, will increase over the next few years. Shared value, some will argue shared value is the nirvana, how you get the shared value. We're working on an indigenous owned and run healthcare company. That's our nirvana of shared value. So we're, we're on that trail, but it's a it's a, you know, it's a, it's a massive leap of faith of the board, but that's where we've got to get to. Finally, I'll leave you with perspective. It's all about perspective. 
This lady is Amita Bagua. She was a 14-year-old Ebola survivor, our first Ebola survivor in Sierra Leone. And that's our Ebola wall, we're all our survivors. And if you can read that quote, this is by Lindus Reading just before he died of cancer. He wrote, countless late nights, holidays, birthdays, school recitals, anniversary dinners were all sacrificed at the altar of some intangible higher cause. So was it worth it? Well, of course not. It turns out it was just advertising.